the money is not as good as I thought it would have been. Hi everyone, my name is Rika and thank you so much for stopping by my channel again. So in today's video, I want to talk about some of the struggles slash frustrations that I have faced being, um, I guess challenges in some sense, being a new Canadian. Uh, it has been a very interesting, I think it's going to be four years December that I've been here. So it's been a very interesting four years and this video is not to deter you from coming to Canada if you are thinking about coming to Canada, to be honest. When my mind was made up to come to Canada, a video like this could not have deterred me. I would have came anyways. So I don't want to take this video as me saying, oh, it's not worth it to come. Still worth it to come. I think that you can definitely come here and make a whole different scenario than the one that I have had. Or you can come here. Like, it's just, for it's different for everyone. And I definitely encourage everyone to come and see what is to be like in Canada as a new Canadian. So if you think this is something that will interest you, feel free to keep watching and let's get on with it so the first bit of frustration that i have felt being a new canadian is the money is not as good as i thought it would have been now if you watch my video about how much i used to earn i did mention that i didn't even really do a lot of research in terms of how much i would earn being um being in hr i didn't really look into it as much as i should have and that's my bad but i it sounds like a lot of money when you compare it to probably how much money you'd be getting in your previous company or, or, or in your in your home country because you convert it and then you you calculate it based on that standard of living but when you come to canada and you realize that listen it's not it so my first i was making four thousand no i was making forty one thousand six hundred per year so after tax i was making about two thousand six hundred per month right um and that is with my first job currently when i look at one bedroom condos being rented in my area they are going for 2400 Stay with me. My salary at that time was 2600 after tax. Rent for a one-bedroom condo is 2400 And this wasn't that long. This was 2019. And I could very well still be making that amount of money. Because a lot of people still are. If you have a car, you're looking at car insurance being... I know with car insurance and car payments, you're paying around $1,000 per month, easily. You're paying around $1,000 per month. So contextualize it to, uh, to one person making around $40,000. So anywhere from forty to 50000 because I don't think that you you probably will be making around around $2,600, probably like $3,000 if you're, if you're between that. So $2,600 on the lower end, so about $3,000 on the higher end because the more you make, the more you're taxed. So say you're making three thousand dollars and your rent is two thousand four hundred, your car payment is a thousand dollars. You already realize you're you're in the red. You're literally already in the red. So the money is not as good as you would think it is. And in terms of the cost of living, I don't think they they align at all. You're if you're looking to buy property, your mortgage is calculated as five times your annual salary. Usually that's what your mortgage is calculated at. Currently, one bedroom condos are going for anywhere from five hundred thousand. I've yet to see a one-bedroom condo in the GTA being sold for four hundred thousand. Honestly, so I, what I've seen is anywhere from five hundred thousand to as much as eight hundred thousand for a one-bedroom, one-bath condo. So, if you are making fifty thousand per year, you almost can basically take it off your mind because it's just not. You can you, you can barely pay rent. So you go buy a condo. We have not added gas to that equation. We have not added groceries to that equation. We have not added anything for leisure to that equation because I mean, all work and no play makes Jill a dull girl. Um, so you can see the cost of living does not really match up to the salaries that are average. And the average salary in Ontario is about 55,000 per year. So um, yeah, the money is not as good as I thought it would have been. While I did not do my research, I still had expectations, which is crazy to think about. Moving on to my next point, um, I know that healthcare is a big reason why a lot of people move to Canada and it's like free healthcare, yay! But if you go to a walk-in clinic, that's fine. You're able to get treated fairly quickly in and out. If for whatever reason you see a specialist, the specialist wait lists are ridiculous. The wait lists are usually at minimum six months. At minimum for some specialists in some areas i can't speak for the entire ontario i do live in the greater toronto area more pac more specifically i do live in the greater toronto area more specifically mississauga and so that's just like where my experiences would have lied um and you're looking at a specialist you're looking at anywhere from six months to years 
to years. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So it might be better healthcare than maybe where you're from or, you know, places you visited, but it's to get to that specialized healthcare. So that is something that you would definitely want to consider. I know even in some instances, it might be more worth going back to your home country, getting treated and coming back here. But whatever ailment you have, who, who knows when someone will be able to actually look at you and give you the type of treatment that you need to get better. Who knows? So that has been something that has been frustrating to me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I face racism here. I, I wouldn't, well, let me give you my experiences. And I think I've shared an experience in my um, house hunting video in terms of I called a number and I asked about the renting situation and I was asked where I'm from and um, I think what region I was from, if I'm from so-and-so region, like I honestly don't know, I don't want to butcher anyone's name or make fun of it or, you know, make anyone feel uncomfortable about their, about their culture because that's a, not the type of person I am. So I was asked if I'm from that area and I was like, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not from that area and, you know, whatever, I'm not from that country, I'm not from that area. And they were just like, oh, no, no, thank you. And, and they just hung up and that was it. I know people who are seeking places to rent right now and i don't necessarily think they have reasons to lie and when they call if they don't have the accent then it's almost a, an immediate no no when i was house hunting for condos to live in um like you know like not like that video but like actually you know hunting for condos to live in my realtor shared with shared with me that there were times when he would reach out to places and they would be like or oh, are they vegetarian and that's usually code for something if you know you know and if they're not then the the the, own, the homeowners or the condo owners will be like no we're not interested in renting to that person i think that once you have the money the credit score you should be able to rent anywhere that you would like to rent but we all know that's not necessarily the case and i think that's very disheartening and i found that very disappointing moving to canada that i mean i know in jamaica we do have classism we don't necessarily have racism but um i'm very uncomfortable with that idea and especially coming from someone who works in hr that's definitely not how I treat people and it truly is not the way I would prefer to be treated but at the same time me can't worry people for fit them things so I go where um people will treat me fairly and you know if I have the funds and I take care of people's place they will rent it to me and I just leave it right there so I am not going to stress myself about things when me necessarily can't control so I've left those types of things alone um I have seen this going around in terms of like a trend or whatever the case is saying what if, if, if family members can really, hold on, if family members can really look at people and send them like a hundred dollars or fifty dollars at Western Union and based on what I've explained to you earlier, a lot of times family members don't even have that hundred or fifty dollars, a lot of them are genuinely struggling because they cannot afford so much and they are just trying to make something out of nothing to be able to share to help alleviate some of the stress that you might be going through so um i do see that trend and you know maybe those people have their reasons why they are saying that i don't know their situation but i will say this a lot of people in first world first world countries um they they struggle and they a shame a shame why they not go back a lot of people are genuinely embarrassed about their situation and that if they go back, they look like a failure. That's literally why they have not gone back to their home countries or just have given up because they know it will look embarrassing. But a lot of people are here and the equivalent of what they make here is in some instances less than what they used to make back home. And that brings me to my other point. And I know that anyone who is even looking at Canada or has been to Canada as a new prof as a professional in Canada for the first time are, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Can need an experience so you'll be in your home country making x amount of dollars and you're, you're able to live really well and then when you come to canada can an experience you don't have Canadian experience and then you're you're basically underpaid or you're not able to get a job in your field and you struggle that is a reality that you face career advancements you'll realize that you do have to take your future into your own hands wherever you are so you'll take your future into your own hands but career advancement is still something that a lot of people still do struggle with because not everyone is giving you know an equal opportunity to advance the way they would like to their your relationship with your families some in some instances do kind of um deteriorate when you've got gotten here in some instances it deteriorates because people might feel like you're earning more money than you're being honest about and you should be sending them more money or you should be helping them more and or i mean me and my sister are extremely close i don't think our relationship has deteriorated but i would have genuinely liked to be there in the physical form a lot more than i'm able to just because i have chosen to move to canada um also that not a lot of other things frustrate me something else and um, i don't think these things are deal breakers for a lot of people a lot of people will still come here um 
but other things that do frustrate people is the amount of tax that they do pay taxes is very expensive if you are fortunate enough to get a bonus and then unfortunate enough to get a bonus in ontario it is taxed at around 40 percent. so if you get a thousand dollars um you're getting probably around six hundred dollars on your paycheck after tax so you do want to be very mindful of that you might work harder for a bonus and then you just get taxed more the taxing is ridiculous and then you get taxed this much you can't so you, you need to see a specialist and it's this forever way to see someone to help to make you better so it is very frustrating something else and i know that um for all my amazon brolies out there um for people who like online shopping to like to shop online and you know especially like amazon and those types of places amazon.ca is lit but you know amazon.com is even more lit the um and i know in jamaica it's like a 50 dollars custom fee if anything over 50 dollars, you will have to pay additional money um in canada it's 50 canadian dollars so it's even less than jamaica so anything that you import here from the US of A and it is over 50 Canadian dollars, you gotta spend um, some more money. So you have to spend additional money. Normally with Amazon though, that is usually the place that I would shop from that, you know, sends things over. It's usually a one-stop shop. So they usually add that into it. It's usually not too terrible, but at the same time, that's something that you do have to also contend with. Um, I wouldn't even bother going into the weather, how cold it is. It, it can, if you are from somewhere that has like a warm, climate and you've never really experienced snow i don't think anything prepares you for snow except coming into snow and feeling this type of cold that we have in canada nothing it is undescribable and i still struggle with it up to today i i dread I, at one point i was working nights and you can imagine i'm working almost like an overnight shift and i think i shared a video on instagram as well and you know if you want you can follow me on instagram it's at rika brooks um people still find me there anyways even though i don't plug it people still find me there i think it's pretty easy to find me and i was overnight when i came out my car was just like completely just snow 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 so by the time i came out and i shoveled off that snow you know my hands were just like this stiff like i couldn't even it was just like a hot mess like honestly the the cold is just i think the other day was three degrees and we're still technically in fall we haven't even entered winter yet so it was three degrees the other day so it's not for ready everybody for the cold rough but i mean it's it's the nature of the beast that we chose to come into um in terms of coming to canada but <sighs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah but cost of living is expensive or cool career advancements um the medical the seeing specialists up here rough it's just a lot of things these things aren't necessarily deal breakers for me i don't think that i would say oh because of these things i'm not going to come to canada but at the same time i think um some of these things you know I don't know i don't know what to say i really don't know what to say but this is the information take with it what you will do with it what you want and if you are thinking about canada hope to see you soon and i hope that your journey has as little hiccups as possible and i truly do hope that everyone who wants to visit somewhere or live somewhere else has the opportunity to do this so this video is in no way to discourage you and i'll i probably said that multiple times throughout this video but these are just some of the things that i have experienced but thank you so much for watching and if you think this video will be helpful to someone Feel free to give it a share and I will see you in my next video.